Welcome. The Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 is France, starting in 1920. This is episode 62, and I'm back. It's been like a month. I mean, I had a week off to play uh, board games in the lakes with my friends, and then three weeks of going to London and Leeds and Manchester and Birmingham and Nottingham and all over the place. Kind of old style traveling for work. Anyhow, that's all finished, and let's uh, let's pick up the threads of where we were up to um before i dive in to the fact that we've just started a brand new war there are just some comments from the channel that i just want to react to so uh let's go across um first of all Rivelli uh, made some very interesting comments first of all about the epe class my brand new guided missile destroyers that i'm slightly pleased about and he said, don't bother with all of this light and medium anti-aircraft gun nonsense. Just get rid of it. Uh, the job of a guided missile destroyer is not really to defend itself. It's to defend everyone around you, the high value ships around you. So take the AA directors up to four. See the anti-aircraft increase. And most importantly, the SAM missile. Now, it only has one SAM missile. And... It's, you know, we don't really, really know how the AA directors work, but it seems a, a pretty reasonable thing. And then you can add back a couple of mediums or lights or whatever. So, yeah, I think he's right. Good call. Don't spare on the AA directors in the late war ships. Secondly, he commented on um, my um, musing around the balance of fleets and how these various navies were able to have so many more capital ships than I'm able to have, uh, despite having budgets that aren't fantastically more. And he suggested that in part that's because the AI ships are just cheaper. You know, there's less tendency to gold plate. Now, on the whole, I haven't been too guilty of gold plating, um, but you know, quality ships do do better when it comes to battle. It's we've we've all seen it over and over again. Quality does come out on top over quantity most of the time. And then there's just the fact that the 1920 start is kind of the advanced start. You just haven't got those first 20 years of designing good ships that have a longer life, that go to battle and weaken your rivals over many wars. And instead, you'll begin in 1920 with a right old rag bag of nonsense that takes nearly a decade to sort out, leaving you, or me in this case, uh, in, a, in a poor place when it comes to the almanac and the balance of fleets. Next up, Hawkeye mentioned that he uses a different refit pattern. He likes to get everything refitted after five to seven years, particularly after the end of a war, to bring everything up to date. He has a particular uh, horror of just wasting money on the 50% increased maintenance that you have to do, and particularly around the, um, the Corvettes. So some of these, these, these old bits of rubbish here, are just fit for nothing other than uh, good old trade protection. And yes, they do cost a bit, but it's so small as to be hardly worth mentioning. But uh, these guys, and I have been refitting some, but the uh, the rest really ought to um, receive an update. So it's just, I mean, for me, it's money. Refitting everything after war I really would only do that if I felt there were some key technologies like fire control, AA direction, good old five-inch dual purposes, those kinds of things, or indeed an increasing quality of the main armament of my battleships and battlecruisers. Uh, otherwise, I'll let them go to 10 years. But yes, in principle, I like to keep on top of the obsolescence problem because it is just a waste of money. Uh, allowing your ships to become obsolete and the increased maintenance that goes around that. Oh, I've been so strapped for cash. <laughs> so strapped for cash. So if we take a look at the DAR class here, you can see that 
yeah, it's a few years obsolescent now. It is costing 50, although that's not outrageous compared to the more modern uh, Arpon. And yes, if I go in and look at the rebuild and just check, I could have had better fire control and I could have had better uh, four inch guns. And all things being equal, I should have got my finger out and modernized them, but strapped for cash. I am even now 4,400 behind. Now, I have the Chateau de Chambord under construction. It should be out in three months' time. If I was to halt that, that would take our balance to just minus 1,000. So hopefully we will be able to get that out. I might just have to halt uh, the Amaral Chambard. So halt on that. See, that equally takes it down to um, just over 1,000. In fact, I, I'll think I'll, I'll do that. I don't want to overstress myself. The air groups are all concentrated in the Mediterranean, largely. And if we have a little look at aircraft types, I think we're pretty modern. We've just got a new float plane under development. Heaven knows what that will bring us. It seems to be really hard to get increases in performance in float planes compared to any of the other aircraft types. If we have a look at the comparison, First of all, with fighters. So if we have a look here, we are the Potez. The Potez seems to have the fastest speed, which is lovely. Not the longest range. 375 seems to be the longest. But the Italian fighter here seems to be dated from 1943. So I have to hope that my 1946 fighter is uh, going to wipe the skies with it, which is... Uh, certainly good to know. In terms of medium bombers, the Italians have a brand new one. They might not be completely in service, and we have our 1945 one. Again, we this time seem to have one of the fastest, although there are some slightly faster, uh, and one with an excellent range. And their dive bomber, again, they've got a relatively 1944 modern one, whereas we have a 1946 one. Speed is certainly near the top, as is range, so certainly competitive, but not exceptional. And then finally, dive bombers. Here we are, again, one of the fastest. If I look for the Italians, they have a 1942 one. So I'm kind of hopeful that um, we'll be able to outperform them in the skies, certainly with the fighters, and that's probably the uh, single most important thing. Other than that, fleet deployments, fleet policy, I suspect we will blockade them anyhow. Uh, let's have a little look at the map, see on the balance of forces. We have 208, they have 309. Oh, okay, so we're not going to blockade them. So we'll keep it on prize rules for the moment. Whilst we're here, we could have a look at any invasion targets, which, as you can see, have got a very long way. Well, extra specially desperate for any of it. And of course, they could invade us too. In a choice between Sardinia and Sicily, I think we'll go for Sicily. Or perhaps we won't. Possession is beyond your invasion range. Your current invasion range is 800 nautical miles. Oh. I think I'm well within 800 nautical miles. I don't know why that is. Maybe Sardinia. Yep, okay, it's happy with Sardinia. I wonder where it's me measuring from. I wonder if it's measuring from Marseille and Toulon rather than uh, any of my near bases. Okay, so that's all good. Let's just save that and plunge into the war. Right, let's see what kind of battle we're going to get. Convoy attack. Who doesn't love a convoy attack? It's right off the coast of Sardinia. Now, normally, in earlier times, I wouldn't be too bothered about the location, but now that air power is becoming such a dominant force in the game, I, uh, I have to be wary. Well, let's see. Let's see what this uh, generates and accept the... Uh... Oh, we've got some Brits. Move over to the battle screen. So, of course... It looks like it's night time. Let's just check. Uh, yep, dawn in six hours and 15 minutes. And we have a teeny tiny little force of destroyers. 
Yep, that's it. Just destroyers. And with this little set of destroyers, we have to sink six merchant ships. So, you know, that's going to be fun. Obviously, a couple of Brits here joining us. Well done, chaps. Let's uh, take them off the AI and uh, see what we get. There's our target location. And as advertised, we are halfway or not even halfway between Sardinia and Tunisia. Six hours of aeroplane free combat is probably quite handy. I'm going to set the game speed up and because I can't change anything else and just see how long it will be before we come into contact. Usually not long. Oh, <laughs> famous last words. Right. Let's zoom in and see what we have. We have an unidentified ship. Ships. Ships in a great big heap. Okay. So these look destroyer-ish, I'm going to say, because the convoys are obviously deeply recognizable. And there seems to be quite a lot of them. I know how the uh, battle generator likes to organize like for like naval forces. And yeah, 4,000 yard range is going to be tricky. Of course, as usual, some of the ships are going, oh, well, we'll just go completely on our own. Yep, that's certainly what I call support. Now, our ship, let's just check out the Brits, by the way. So, eight above the water, that's nice. And some six inch, some five inch dual purposes. Well, fair enough. Ours are less handy. And these, yeah, four inches. Well, we have what we have. Weirdly, we, that's going to say we can't change the speed, but we can. I'm going to take it up to 24. We seem to be chasing them. Okay, let's take it up to 28. I'm going to put the lock on because it then gets much easier to identify whether we are gaining or not. So we are slightly gaining and we seem to be finding convoy. Now, usually the convoys are um, much more regular in pattern, but I'm assuming that these, this is one convoy line and this is another, hard to know. So let's, well, let's cross their T. Ooh, shooting has started. Who did that? Well, from the white splashes, it looks like we did, but it's not being reported up here in the log. Ah, now we're starting to, uh, to get something. Well, we're still shooting, or well, someone is. I'm going to take control of these guys because they're just wobbling all over the place. At least the Brits have the decency to um, head towards the sound of guns. Just coming into sighting range. Still unrecognized. Actually, let's let's get these chaps to run down the length of the convoy. That seems like a fun thing to do. A nice way of sinking s six ships. Ah, and a large merchantman. Well, that's nice. The Brits are now not going towards the sound of the guns, but I'm sure they will soon. All piles of torpedoes going in. There we go. So four hits from torpedoes. Five, six, seven, eight. Well, this might be all going very well. Nine, ten, eleven. So I'm going to bring these round, and I'm going to bring this one round, assuming that these are the enemy warships. And I will take them back north again. Many, many hits. Oh, well, it says that's a cruiser. Well, if it is, that would be great fun. Does my chap still have his torpedoes? Yes. Let's double check that. No, no, he doesn't. Okay, so let's get him going out the way before he gets into serious harm. And we will chase the light cruiser with the Brits, because that's the kind of people they are. Now, with these... Oh. Well, that didn't go so well for the acorn. Uh, with these 
merchant ships I forgot the word for that then it's hard to know exactly how many have been loosed off so let's bring the renner around the Renard's being hit by a torpedo well glad I didn't go that way with the rest of the force as you can see the amount of intelligence that we have here is very poor bring the speed of my force down 24 because really with these merchant ships they don't have to be charging around all over the place Who are they firing at? I'll put another way. Why aren't they firing at, I don't know, ships really close to them? 900 yards. Just check on the torpedo situation. So they've all gone. Now, I can't remember if they have reloads or not. Probably not. That was a relatively recent thing. Here we go. Let's see if we can identify this ship, or we don't seem to. It says it's an AMC. Hey, so we've done the business. Let's go, chaps. Let's uh, crank up the speed and leave the scene of our crimes. There we go. Maybe just slow that down slightly. Whoops. And head to Bizerte. And that will be it. Uh, shame about um, the British destroyers getting sunk. It's a knife fight. You never know how that's going to go. They seem to get uh, punished quite severely, both taking torpedoes. Um, they were under AI control, so I'm not really uh, blaming myself. And there we go. Lots of planes coming out. The dawn. Uh, nothing really to do unless some of our planes launch some strikes against them, which would be obviously a bit of fun. And no one is left at sea. So, bit too sunk. We sank 10 of theirs. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we went in with seven destroyers. They had 14, so they're twice our size. None of them were the light cruiser as advertised. But we sank 10 out of five. So it is a victory for us. Hooray. Got a big one, actually. They scored just under 7,000 and we scored 27,500, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's close that off, just see where the um, flagships went to. So, a bit all over the place, but yeah, fine. As a first battle, I'm pretty happy with that. Nothing like uh, using your uh, allies as a soak for ship losses, and seems to be a perfectly pleasant way to start a war. Let's call that the first battle of Sardinia because I kind of suspect it won't be the last. Delayed because of insufficient force superiority. Fair enough. Um, some stuff. Oh, heavens. Poor old Panleve. And 
they have eight uh, 69 we have 55 no one is doing very much in particular mind you we sank five and lost three that's quite a lot really let's just check out the map so that we can have a look at the relative force comparison and see if there's much that we can do about that so we have 213 they have 224 so not a huge difference uh here let's just go look in northern europe where we only have 20 and they have 49 we have a carrier. Let's just um, ships in service. Location Northern Europe. Oh, okay. So it's our new carrier. Uh, yeah. Why is she there? Let's um, let's pop her into the Mediterranean, where she'll be much more at home. All right. Well, that's that for episode sixty-two. Hopefully, I will continue to uh, get these uh, released. Uh, much more regularly. The uh, month of disruptions has passed away and I'm back into a more steady groove. As ever, thanks for watching. Stay safe and see you next time.